The law matters. Of course it does. Hi, I'm Debbie Mores, your host and moderator. This program has been developed to educate, inform, and help you with the law matters because the law matters. Understand the law better, and you're in a better position to protect yourself, your family, and your business. As we say, we provide information and resources that will help you decide whether or not you actually need to contact a lawyer. Some matters perhaps you can handle yourself. In either case, if you need outside additional counsel, you'll be better prepared, and as a result, so will the professional you select. Our goal, of course, is to make sure that you can save time, money, and achieve the best possible results. So as usual, we want to say that we thank and welcome from Bazaar Associates, Bazaar and Associates Law Firm in East Providence, David, thank welcome. You. So today, appropriately enough, lawyer advertising. We thought it was about time to tackle that. You should know that all advertising has rules and regulations. There is such a thing as truth in advertising. The FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is supposed to make sure that there is not anything that's misleading, deceptive, or unfair. In fact, though, lawyers have other issues that they must address when they're handling any kind of outside advertising. So if you happen to be a consumer of legal services, you may be surprised to know probably um, at the very least relieved to know that there are very special rules developed by the American Bar Association which governs what they can and can't say, what they should and shouldn't say, regulations as well as ethics. Um, there are probably, I think we read most about 7.2, but there are a listing of rules and regs, even governing what a law firm can use for its name and letterhead. So there are things in place you probably need to know, we need to know. So David, um, I'm in advertising. I know that there's truth in advertising. You have some special issues to tackle. Do you want to tackle a few in general? Sure. Because I have some specific okay. ones for you. So why don't we start in general with the um, progression through time of lawyer advertising. And for me, just I'll give you, I don't usually do this, my own personal opinion. Um, I was, I'm going to ask you a few others. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so I believe that um, being a lawyer is a profession, and I am not an advocate of TV commercials and um, solicitations and those types of things um, because I think it's a profession. And that shouldn't, be, I wouldn't pick a doctor who advertises on TV be, just because they advertise on TV, and I wouldn't pick an attorney that way either. So I'm not a big fan of especially TV and radio commercial advertising for lawyers. However, this was regulated by bar associations, Supreme Courts that regulate uh, attorneys, and the American Bar Association, as you said, and so forth and so on for many, many years. And there was actually a ban on attorneys advertising on TV and that type of thing. And in 1977, in Bates versus Arizona, it was challenged. And the Supreme Court said that advertising is a protected first free speech, First Amendment right that attorneys have as well as everybody else and that you can't infringe upon that First Amendment right um, of free speech. And so in that case, they said attorneys do have the right to advertise. It's not an unfettered right, and there are rules and regulations that still apply, and there have been over the course of time challenges to different regulations and rules that have been put out. I believe in New York there was a challenge to a whole list of rules that were put in place, and some of them were upheld as being valid, and some said no, that's still an infringement on First Amendment rights. So. The right to advertise is there, it's not an unfettered right, and you have to do it in a certain way. Well, of course, in these days, considering so many people use the internet, with your business, as well as doctors, as well as um, a few other that are under that banner of professional advertising, they have to be particularly careful, of course, and with the internet, websites fall under the auspices of advertising. One could say it's just simple communication, but not just and not only. So considering lawyers and doctors and others um, are out of the doc dark ages and no longer consider it feasible to merely wait for that fabulous referral, although that certainly is, a, there's nothing, no better form of advertising than to have word of mouth and a referral. We understand that. But if you need to have some communications of your business, it certainly makes sense that you're going to do it in online. Just about everyone 
every profession has a, a website these days. What you actually can say certainly has become a very big issue. And I think that most people who have seen banners, television ads that you say that you don't like, radio commercials, print, most people are aware that they can't say, for example, David Bazaar specializes in uh, personal injury law. What is that about? That's probably the biggest issue that flag that uh, most um, are flagged about if they go in that tread in that way. So, what do you okay. think? Okay. So you raised a lot of issues. So I'm going to take them one at a time. Um, I think that the best way for a consumer or an individual or business to find an attorney is the same way I would find a doctor, which is by word of mouth. Ask people you know and trust and respect their opinion. What do you think? So if you, if, if I, for instance, had a knee problem, I would speak to people I know and say, what doctors do you know? Who do you know that's done this? Who's good? And try to get a recommendation that way. So I would do the same thing for attorneys. And I wouldn't go to an attorney because I saw them on TV. I saw them get rear-ended in an accident on TV and say, come to me. I would go to an attorney that I've been referred to by a friend who I know ha has the ability to handle my case. And I might go to more than one, too, by the way, because there's no rule against interviewing attorneys to see if you want them to handle you, just like you could do that with a doctor. The other thing is, um, well, I'll give you one other way I'd go to an attorney. If I saw somebody that was talking on a TV show and did a really good job, I might consider going then. You don't consider that advertising then. You just consider I think that it's information. Giving information. And that's exactly right. Um, I don't come on this show and say, hey, I do this, this, and this, come see me. I come on and say, these are your rights, and this is what you should know. And if somebody wants to come to me because they think I did a good job, I'm not going to say, no, don't do that. But at least they know me a little bit more than just by some bye frank, bye. Yeah, you know, silly advertisement that um, may or may not be realistic. So in any event, so that's how I would find an attorney. Now, to talk about what you can and cannot do a little bit, you talked about can't talk about specialization. And that is regulated in Rhode Island by the Supreme Court that regulates the practice of law. And if you do advertise and you say you do something, you have to put a disclaimer in that says the Rhode Island Supreme Court does not certify anybody in a specialty of a law area. So the Supreme Court in Rhode Island doesn't say that David Bazaar specialized in personal injury, for example. Um, all they do is they certify and I take an exam, I pass the exam and they say I am qualified to practice law. It's a general practice of law. That's all that is certified by the Supreme Court. So I can't hold myself out as a specialist in any area. And certainly if I say I do practice in a certain area, I have to follow that up with, but this is not certified by the Supreme Court. Apparently there are some states, uh, this is a state by state basis from what I would read, some do or do have certification uh, abilities so that you could say I, uh, a patent attorney for example and there's a special uh, association that makes sure that whoever that lawyer may be has gone through and has um, taken past certain tests or whatever their protocol is to make sure that they can say it. So it can be said in some states but here and I believe Massachusetts you can't say we specialize in. You practice so in, but don't you're specialize. correct that each state regulates the practice of law. So you're admitted to the bar for Massachusetts. You're admitted to the bar for Rhode Island. And as an attorney admitted to the bar in each state that you're admitted to, you have to follow the rules of that state when you're practicing within that state. And so that's what we talked about. Some states may have a procedure or a process for being certified in some area and if you are you can say that I'm, I'm sure but Rhode Island doesn't I don't believe Massachusetts does as far as I know and therefore anyone who tries to hold themselves out as a specialist in Rhode Island or probably Massachusetts would fall under that auspices of the court doesn't allow you to do that because they don't s certify you in that area and also tied to that inextricably is the idea that FTC says you cannot say anything that is misleading and since there, as you say, is not a, a body in place to make that specialization certification, it would be, in fact, misleading and misrepresenting to call yourself and hold yourself out as being 
That's right. So not only do you have to follow the rules that apply to everybody who advertises, FTC rules and so forth, but you have to follow the um, somewhat more constricting rules that the bar associations in certain states or the Supreme Court and other states, depending on who's regulating the practice, puts in place. And so you mentioned, and I didn't ignore your third part of your first question, which was about websites. And it says the same rules that apply to advertising on TV or in newsprint or on uh, the internet are all the same. They apply to websites. So in that area, again, if you put something about specialization, you would have to have that disclaimer information in it. And again, it can't be misleading or any of that nature. And I think you had mentioned uh, maybe before or during this about someone being responsible for the content of the website. And in my practice as the attorney, any emails that come through the website come to me and I'm ultimately responsible to the Supreme Court for what's on my website. And interestingly enough, um, in my profession, in the advertising profession, publicity is considered news. In yours, they consider that also advertising. And so what you hold out as news also has to withstand the scrutiny of not being at all misleading. So you would have no trouble announcing a name change. Uh, you moved your office. Um, you, had a, you had a partner. Uh, someone won an award. Those are statements of fact. but and they can obviously be vetted, but that's also considered advertising. I take it that most lawyers do not have a problem, and you included perhaps, don't have a problem with such news being disseminated that's not the same as buy now and save and take yeah. me on as your lawyer. Exactly, and I think um, putting out information that's true and accurate um, is reasonable. And I am not at all adverse to putting out that type of information. In fact, when I moved, so my clients knew that I moved at one point in time, I even did a billboard just saying, hey, you should know that I exactly. moved. Um, I'm, I wasn't soliciting new clients, so to speak, although it's sort of, remember, advertising is also name recognition. So attorneys who do advertise and do it for the sake of getting their names out, I think it's appropriate. It's a, a People who hear your name in advertising and then hear your name again from someone else, I think are probably more likely to go to you. So I don't have a big problem if it's done professionally. And again, of course, I think this is a profession. That's my biggest thing. It's the stuff that um, goes over the line, my line at least, that I have a problem with. And I think that that speaks to um, not just the regulations, it speaks to ethics and it also speaks to what you think is appropriate for you and most um, who have that as the ultimate bottom line when they're deciding what they're going to say and how they're going to say it and in what medium they're going to present it. So every doctor, every lawyer um, is in business to acquire new clients, new patients. There are restrictions to what you can say in terms of having direct contact contact Content. with a progressive uh, or a prospective client, excuse me, where you certainly can't say, come on aboard, bring your sister and I'll give you two for one, or so there's right. not that kind of uh, um, retail advertising, which certainly would be demeaning to the profession and to you personally. What can you say as a, an advertiser or as one who wants to disseminate information? Well, you, you know, you're certainly free to do what I don't like. Like which is to um, advertise that you handle personal injury cases. You see the advertisements for mesothemolomia or asbestosis or whatever. And you can advertise to the general public that you handle those kinds of cases. I don't think in Rhode Island you can say I specialize in those kinds of cases, but I handle those types of cases. You can do that. What you can't do and what would be unethical and perhaps bordering on illegal is to directly contact somebody you know who was injured in an accident or has a disease or was part of a catastrophe and say, I'll write a letter, call, reach out to, go to see in the hospital somebody who was injured in a catastrophic injury or any actual, any accident and say, I would like to represent you because that's called barratry um, and it's maybe in um, parlance, um, ambulance chasing 
that is unethical, and I think if it's not illegal, it should be illegal, but it certainly crosses the line and cannot be done. So direct solicitation of somebody who's been in an accident or has a legal issue and you want to represent them, that crosses the line. You cannot do that. In a recent uh, television show, there was a, a scene of someone sitting in a hospital waiting room, and a man comes in dressed with a white coat on, hands uh, a person who had just been injured a card. The name was, first name, Haywood, second name, may I help you, or can I help you? And interestingly enough, he said, I'm a lawyer, I can't really solicit you, but Haywood, or can I help yep, you? Right. That's certainly a direct solicitation. So you can't do that. You can't have a phone conversation to do solicitation. Um, what you else can't, can't you? You can't send a letter you can't send a to letter? somebody. Um, I think what's now is gets into more of a gray area is if I know that your cousin was injured um, and I said to you, hey, I can help your cousin, um, it's not a direct solicitation, but I don't think it's appropriate either. I, I kind of think um, just more of a personal conversation. You and I are friends. You know what I do. For me to remind you what I do and um, how's your cousin doing, not a direct solicitation is probably close but okay. Um, but certainly going to a hospital, handing out a card, um, having... So, so I've, I've heard stories of attorneys who have people who would we'll call them runners, if you will, go out and find cases and give out their card and do that. That crosses the line because that person has no connection to the person who was injured, and they're going out and trying to solicit business for that attorney. That's a direct solicitation. That's a violation. That's something that should be enforced and stopped by the Supreme Court or the appropriate um, or arm of the Supreme Court, the disciplinary council that handles those things. So soliciting directly, either di by the attorney himself or through an intermediary, is not appropriate. An attorney who knows somebody personally and has another connection to him can speak to him. And there are rules about, um, and these are some of the things that were challenged in that New York case where you, they didn't want them using nicknames, they didn't want them... Um, advertising uh, they were trying to limit the TV advertising and the print advertising and ad uh, soliciting within 30 days of an injury and um, different types of things like that direct solicitation the things that were more general were all held to violate the First Amendment but the direct solicitation the um, holding yourself out if you can't in that as a specialist those types of things were found to be reasonable restraints on your free speech rights. And from what I had read in preparing for this, the list is kind of lengthy, 7.1 through 7.5 that that control the communications. And they're very specific about saying, you can have a brochure that says these are the things that you can do. You can address anything that's generic, just not directly. Now, if in your handing out a brochure, a card, or anything else, someone then emails you or uh, contacts you through your website. Do you also handle thus and such? Your response then is not you soliciting them, but they reaching out to you, and that changes the nature of how that is, whether it was by phone and you would call, return that call. But they laid that out very specific um, detail about what you can put even on the outside of an envelope, that it can stay generic. It just can't say, Mary, we talked yesterday. Let's, uh, I would like to handle your divorce case or whatever. Um, it sounds that it's reasonable that, you, that there's some guidelines on this. And yet, back to websites, specific advertising, and you can weigh in on this opinion-wise, um, it is legal for law firms to do what other businesses do, namely pay per lead or pay per click. So specifically, you as a law firm can certainly contact a lead generating firm and have them do some solicitation for you, which can be... Uh, the bizarre an associate's firm uh, handles thus and such. That's not quite the same as them saying, we would like for you to call Mr. David Bazaar tomorrow. Um, how do you feel about the lead generation companies that many use, and it's meant to stay general, not specific? How do you okay. feel about that? So here's the thing. That's going to fall more, that's going to fall more into the category of someone is looking for an attorney. 
So it's someone else who's inquiring, um, do you, Deb, I was hurt, do you know an attorney who handles those kinds of cases? So their Deb in that case, their friend becomes the internet. Now, I'm not a big fan of those sites where people are reviewing things because, for instance, I have a, a friend who likes to go to restaurants and tell me this restaurant's good, this restaurant's bad, and um, our tastes in restaurants are often very different. What happens in the professional sense is that someone might um, have had not a great experience, not for any purpose of the attorney who was representing them, but just the case itself, and now they start with negative reviews. I don't like those review sites, to be honest with you. I think that um, there are competitors and people who use them with false praise and also to go after people that they don't like. Yes. Um, but the lead generation things, which are really a response to someone putting an inquiry looking for somebody, I equate that more to the word of mouth referral. And the way that internet works, as I understand it, is um, a general search is going to bring up first and foremost all those advertisements and click and pay for ads. The sponsored ads, sponsored yes. Sponsored things. And so those are coming up in response to a request for information as to who does this. And then the websites that have the better SEO, is that what it's called? Search engine optimization, yes. Okay. Those will come up next and so forth and so on. So I don't think it's unreasonable for a doctor or for an attorney or someone who's a professional to put themselves in a spot to be recognized on that request for information. Yes, and in your mentioning SEO or search engine optimization, many uh, will use the idea of planning their keywords. So let's say um, that would be if David does many divorces, some bankruptcies, and workers' compensation, that the words that people would see on the front side, that home page, also would be on the side that nobody sees, the back side. That's what search engines, Googles of the world, look at in terms of algorithms. See anything wrong with whoever's making your website, making sure that those words are clearly listed in the order of your preference or in the order of importance and weight? Any no, problem with that? I, I think that's perfectly fine because those words are in your website appropriately. Yes. They're what you do they're not um, misleading or being used untruthfully. So why not, why shouldn't you be able to try to put them in such an order that if someone comes looking for you or someone like you, that you show up higher up on the list? Okay, and on your website or in any advertising that is ever, or your brochure, do you see any problem with saying, we are the best, the cheapest, um, best and cheapest, such yeah. superlatives. So I, I don't think those are appropriate words to use. Um, I think they're descriptors that may or may not be accurate. Um, best is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Cheapest, um, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be associated with that anyway, so it's not something <laughs> I would use. But I think what's appropriate is, uh, I think brochures, I think, folders, those types of things, are very appropriate for someone who's come to you. So you can say to them, these are things that I do besides what you came to me for. I call it cross-marketing. It's fine to cross-market a client who's come to you. And I came to you for this personal injury case. I know you do workers' comp, but do you do real estate or family court too? Sure. And so when you give them the paperwork back with a list of, and by the way, these are other things that you do. And if we provided a good service to you, please refer a friend who might need help. I don't have a problem with that because it's not like you're reaching out to someone who you don't know and giving information that they don't want. And part of it is um, protecting people from being solicited from people that they're not asking for information from and don't want to hear from. That is part of the what plays into the rules. Of course, the biggest part is that it's a profession and you want to regulate the profession to run in an appropriate manner. All advertising guidelines are meant to be uh, for your benefit so that you monitor and um, just monitor your own work. But do you monitor others? Does the American Bar Association, does the Rhode Island Bar Association look at what other lawyers do to make sure that they are legal even if they cross the line in terms of what you wouldn't do? There are things that are clearly your opinion, right. valuable, 
yeah. but not necessarily beyond the legal scope. Right. What about the monitoring that's done by you or by Rhode Island Bar Association? So I'm too busy to really monitor what other people do unless it directly affects my client. Uh, but people who are bothered by it should report it to the disciplinary council. We are. In Rhode Island, at the uh, Rhode Island Supreme Court, um, you go on the website, you find disciplinary counsel, there's a complaint form that can be filed. You probably could file something with the Bar Association too, but I think this is really much more regulated by the disciplinary counsel because it's a violation of the rules of ethics. Now, advertising that's not tasteful, that crosses my line, doesn't fall into the disciplinary counsel's bailiwick. He doesn't care if it's just a disgusting advertisement that follows the rules. All he cares about is are things that violate the rules of ethics that an attorney is supposed to follow, such as direct solicitation, um, claims that are untrue, that type of thing. So if I was contacted by an attorney while I'm in the hospital and it really bothered me, I would contact the disciplinary counsel. Good to know. Um, another thing I realized with website uh, advertising for lawyers, you actually have to have a physical location and it needs to be listed on the home page. I can't imagine that uh, lawyers don't have at least even a home office, so I can't imagine that that would be a very big problem. But it does, it did bring to my attention the fact that they are trying to be somewhat circumspect about um, you having a bona fide business and not just. Um, a fly by night that can set up a website doing just about anything. Now, all businesses are supposed to say that they're self regulatory and that they're not um, deceiving anyone. What's your thought about the fact that you have a code of conduct, but you can't legislate good taste? Um, do you think that most in your profession do honor that, or do you feel that there is too much that's offensive? I, I don't think it's as bad in Rhode Island as those few vacations I've had in Florida where you're just bombarded all the time with tasteless ads. Um, what's tasteful to me um, or, or not tasteful to me may be tasteful to somebody else and I don't have a real problem with those ads that I don't like. I mean that's somebody's right to do that and if they're successful and helpful, you know, they're going to spend more money and do those things and they'll get a return on their investment. That's why they do it. But I do think that um, the only concern I really have is when a lawyer crosses the line from not tasteful to tasteful, but rather from ethical to unethical. And that's the bigger issue. In the very few seconds that we have left, David, do you feel that with the laws that that are in place right now that it's too restrictive or do you feel that they're fair in terms of you being able to reach out to acquire new clients and communicate with clients? I think it's appropriate what we have in place right now and I think it's appropriate because it allows attorneys to reach out but it also protects the public from untruthful advertising, deceitful advertising and being solicited when they shouldn't be. Good, thank you. We hope that you found this interesting and helpful. If you should be watching for and seeing uh, advertising for lawyers, and we hope that you will continue to stay tuned to the Law Matters because certainly the Law Matters to you.